Well, welcome back to City Line. We are talking about in this segment the Tacoma Dune. And if you don't know what the Tacoma Dune is, you're going to find out here in just a second. Please join me in welcoming Eric Hamburg, sci fi author and park board president of Metro Parks Tacoma. Welcome, Eric. It's so good to see you. It's so good to see you. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Oh my gosh, COVID has been a handful because I haven't seen you probably a year before COVID, and I haven't seen you during COVID. So you look fabulous. Ernest Jasmine, marketing manager for the Grand Cinema. Wow. I get you two weeks in a row. Does it get any better than this? You can't get rid of me now after not seeing me forever. I know. See, the same as Eric. Eric will be on next week, and I can't get rid of him either. Um, uh-huh. We're going to talk about Dune. So, Eric, the new blockbuster film version of Dune is opening this week at the Grand Cinema. I can't wait. And there are some unique Tacoma connections on this. The obvious one is Dune Peninsula at Point Defiance Park. Um, tell us about it, and why was the park named after the original book, Dune? Yeah, um, so it is named after after Dune, which was published in 1965, and it's a, a landmark of science fiction. It really was about something. It has a great environmentalist message, and its author, Frank Herbert, uh, comes from Tacoma. Um, and there's a nice parallel in the book where, you know, what we did with the park actually does parallel uh, the, the the novel and that story where you have this this um, environmental decline in the world of Dune, and we had that with that park. I don't know if anyone's been out there, but that was formed by the toxic byproduct of the Asarco smelter, um, and the EPA came in, capped it, contained all those toxins uh, so that they can't leak out into the environment and harm people or, or nature, and then Metro Parks built a, top, a park on top of that. Um, so in a real way, that story of like, uh, you know, environmental decline turning into something, you know, that's balanced and beautiful again, that's in the in the book also happened right here in Tacoma and the park mirrors that, which is pretty cool. Metro Parks Tacoma has made a mini documentary all about this connection. Let's take a peek. It's not often that fiction comes to life. The original Dune, a groundbreaking science fiction book by Tacoma author Frank Herbert, imagined a world that had seen incredible ecological destruction. And now, the 2021 movie Dune centers on reclaiming that world from the sand. But what's really cool is that in the city where Frank Herbert grew up, the city that inspired Dune's planetary damage, is a real-life ending to that story. A real-life Dune. We're talking about Dune Peninsula at Point Defiance Park. So, Eric, tell us about how the mini documentary came about and why is it important? This came about um, because the Grand Cinema, which, you know, is a beloved uh, institution here in Tacoma is showing this movie and Metro Parks has this park that's connected to it. And we thought, what if we could uh, tell people the backstory behind this park, kind of like what we're doing right now, um, where we can share the environmental message behind it, the connection uh, to Dune and the author Frank Herbert, the history of of the park, and, and show that to people who are about to see this big movie at the Grand. And that's a pretty exciting uh, thing that we get to tell that story uh, to everyone who's there for, for the movie. Oh, it's so true. So the other unique connection, and Ernst, I'm going to get to you in just a second. Hang in. Okay, there. okay, I'm right here. With those red curtains behind you, um, is that this film just premiered at the Venice Film Festival. What a, what a Venice Film Festival, what a connection. And obviously, as you mentioned, the author, uh, Frank Herbert, was born right here in Tacoma. It's pretty exciting. Uh, so, so Frank Herbert uh, was born, I think, a hundred more than a hundred years ago it, here in Tacoma. He grew up here. He lived all over uh, the city. He graduated from Lincoln High, and they recognized him as one of their 
when they turned 100 as one of their 100 graduates, you know, uh, most influential or famous graduates. Um, but he loved the Puget Sound. He loved the environment. He'd fish in the morning in the sound. He would. He one time, as a as a child, swam the Tacoma Narrows before there was even a bridge. Um, like this was just a you know the environment here was just a part uh, of of who he was, and he loved that his hometown was situated right here on in this beautiful spot. I think it may have inspired him, don't you think? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, at this point, I'm going to turn you into Siskel and Ebert, but instead it's going to be Eric and Ernest. So right. let's talk about the film itself, uh, what it's about, and why people should go see it. Ernest, I want you to answer that first from a director cast point of view. <laughs> so why should we go see it? Who are we going to see that we would recognize? Well, the first thing that got me really excited about this movie is the director, Denis Villeneuve, which I think finally I'm pronouncing correctly, French-Canadian guy, has a great track record with science fiction. In recent years, he directed Arrival, which was a critical hit. One of my personal favorites, Blade Runner 2049, which won Best Cinematography that year, so that movie was gorgeous. Uh, then you get to the cast. You've got uh, Timothy Chalamet, who's going to be Paul Atreides, the main character. He is apparently in every hit movie coming out. This month, he's also in the French Dispatch, which we'll show next week. Uh, you've got people like Oscar Isaac, uh, Charlotte Rampling, Zendaya, uh, David Bautista, who looks pretty scary in the trailer. So the Parkinons aren't going to look as silly as the first movie. Hopefully, they'll have fewer pimples, that sort of thing. <laughs> on, on paper, I think it seems like this is a movie they can't miss. All right. So, Eric, let's talk about plot. For people who are like, from the Les Mis school of movies, I have to read the huge encyclopedia before I can sit down and understand it. What's Dune about? Well, it is set in uh, a galactic empire on a particular planet. That particular planet is called Arrakis, and it has been turned into a desert by, you know, exploitation by the people who are there. Um, and a family comes, it's, it's kind of like a backwater and this family is assigned to take, to, to be the family that runs it. Basically, that's the Paul Atreides character that Timothy Chalamet will play. And all of that is fine, but let's be clear. One of the best parts of the plot are the giant sandworms that, that like go through the sand. Um, and if you've seen the trailer, you would know, you would recognize these. They're, they're just immense creatures, fierce, awesome creatures. And I can't wait to see them on the big screen. Eric, I'm going to say it right here. If I drive to the ferry and I see blow up sandworms on that slide, I'm coming to you. <laughs> Sounds good. So Ernst, will this be better than the 1984 David Lynch version, do you think? It it has to be. Uh, we, we all know that David Lynch is a genius. We know that now, but back then he had some problems. The special effects of the old one were trash, just uh, dated by even by the standards back then. The costumes were silly. You had guys with big Oompa Loompa eyebrows. Uh, uh, maybe the biggest problem they had was uh, that they had this notion that they could shoehorn at 900 pages worth, worth of world building into this two hour movie. They cut out a lot of stuff. It didn't quite make sense. Plus, Sting can't really act. So uh, I think I think they're being smart this time. They're cutting it into two movies so the plot can kind of breathe and uh, develop in a way that hopefully makes sense. Uh, I think it has to be better. It's, it, it looks really good from where I'm sitting. I love it. Like a good bottle of wine. It's going to breathe in between. Right, right. Um, because let me tell you something, that 1984 version didn't do anything for us sci-fi nerds. It only made us worse. We were like, ah! Oh! And then, of course, yeah. we got made fun of. Um, there is, Eric, a bigger theme of the Dune, the book, Dune, the movie, and obviously Metro Park's Dune, the park, um, which is protecting the environment. How does that connection all come together for us? Because you mentioned, yeah, it used to be in a Sarko smelter. That that yeah. smell was toxic. Absolutely. And and that's the really incredible part of this story is uh, when you read the biography of Frank Herbert, you know, and I talked about the love that he had for Tacoma and the Puget Sound. Um, he would see the smelter and he would, he was very evocative. He said it would, it was creating air so thick you could chew it. And 
According to this biography, which was written by his son, seeing his hometown destroyed by this pollution inspired the environmental message of Dune, which is a really incredible thing. The Dunes themselves were inspired by the Dunes down in Florence, Oregon. But it was seeing his hometown. We were so polluted uh, at the time that we inspired that, you know, environmentalist message is a pretty great connection. And then with that park in particular, the fact that it is made from the byproduct of that smelter and that we have turned it into a beautiful park, um, the very, you know, the very thing that inspired the message and here we have reclaimed it, I think is just such a lovely, uh, there's a cyclical nature to it that I just think is really beautiful. And it's really exciting that we can recognize uh, Frank Herbert and the book and that environmentalist message right there on the Puget Sound. I love that. What a great reminder. I think there needs to be like a study guide that goes with our own doom. You know, you, you walk over there and it's like you download it on your phone. <laughs> um, so uh, let's go back to Siskel and Ebert. Okay, Ernest, you're the non-fan perspective. And Eric, you are from the author perspective because yes, we know you're an author. Um, there are a lot of sci-fi fans out there um, like you, Eric, uh, but if someone... Ernst is not a sci-fi fan. Uh, Ernest, why should they come and see Dune? Uh, to clarify, I wouldn't say I'm a non-fan, but I am a latecomer. I just read the novel for the first time maybe five, six years ago, mostly okay. because I knew it was a big Tacoma story. But I'm not a diehard like Eric. Uh, I'd say, uh, well, for starters, uh, just a sense of civic pride. See what the big deal is all, all about. Uh, this guy from Tacoma who made this story that influenced so many people best-selling sci-fi novel of all time and aside from that uh just looking at the trailers seeing who's involved you're gonna see spectacle on an epic scale which is what you want from your big holiday movies so uh, i mean this is gonna be a big event uh i think this is gonna be open for a while and a lot of people will be talking about it so and let's let's also talk about that it's playing at the grand right big Come screen and the best popcorn in the world Exactly. Okay, exactly. Mr. Author, from your point of view, why should someone come and see Dune? It is a it is a landmark novel of, of science fiction, and it marks a turning point in some ways where science fiction before people would write about moon bases and ray guns, and it was almost just <laughs> like a, an excuse to invent the future, which can be totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But Dune really marks this turning point in science fiction where they said, what if we use these fantastical scenarios to understand uh, our own culture better? Um, and it really started that that turning. So it's it's a it's a for all of the big blockbuster, you know, um, action that I expect, the big sandworms. I'm also expecting something thoughtful about the environment, about colonialism, about all sorts of things um, that are in the book and I hope will also be in the movie. I love that. I want to say thank you to both of you so much for your opinions, for your research, and most of all, for just being uh, grit citizens and knowing Tacoma so well and giving so much back to us. Um, it is incredible to have you on. And as they say, I'll see you at the movies.